Today we're going to talk about when Jesus pray. How many of you people can tell me where in the Bible that you know that Jesus prayed? Prayed all the time, Garden of Gethsemane, on the mountaintop. Every time he healed someone, five loaves and two fishes, he prayed 24-7. In the book of John, our church is a teaching church. We teach and then we release you. We are in John 17. And everybody that was here on Tuesday night left here a changed person. Everybody left here a changed person. And when Pastor Don started the lesson, he said, it's deep, very deep. And when Pastor Ricky preached about it on Wednesday night, he said it changed his life. So I want to tell you that when Jesus pray, things are happening. He loved his disciples. He loved you. He says he wants you. He picked you. He picked you to become his children. This is all Jesus stuff. Jesus changed our lives. And we don't give him the enough honor and respect. He deserves. I laughed at my husband this morning. He says, what kind of school do you teach people? I said, we teach our people the gospel. Because we want you to go out and save lives and people's salvation. God is not going to say one day. Thank you for all your prophecies. He's going to say, thank you for all the souls you saved. Thank you that you made the effort to save some souls. That's why in this ministry we teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. How we can help other people to become Christians. Maybe you go to a gym in the morning Maybe you can tell people what Jesus has done for you. Maybe you can take what we say here and introduce Jesus to our YouTube page and tell people what we do in this building. I'm not so worried about the quantity and how much people we have in the church and the money that come with it, because none of our pastors is paid anyways. None of, uh, not a single pastor is on a payroll here. But I want to tell you how special you are to Jesus and to our God. And the days has come that we have to honor him more. And how, does, how do we honor him? Showing them our love for him. Caring about the lost people out there. And touching their souls. And telling them there's a living God. That's what we do. So when I look at chapter 17, as a pastor... I said, man, let's do this Jesus style. Because when Jesus put his style out there and his mark on the product, it's the best style there is. So let me read this prayer to you this morning. When Jesus pray. If you open your Bibles at uh, chapter 17, verse 1, 
John 17. That whole passage is a prayer. And I'm going to read you. I ask you the patience with me today to read that passage today. And this is a time where Jesus come before the Lord. He's about to be betrayed by who, did, who betrayed him? Judas Iscariot. Because of money. Can you imagine selling Jesus out for a bag of money? Can you imagine denying him in your life because of money? Let me show you how do we do it the Jesus style. After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed. He's praying for himself. He looked towards heaven and prayed. And he said, Father, just that word, Father, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son may glorify you. He's praying for himself. He's talking to the Lord. For you granted him authority over all the people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent, I have brought you the glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. He went and he picked the disciples, the 12 disciples, and he teach them over the course of three years. He says, Lord, I did that for you because you sent me. I have brought your glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Man, what a good man. He knew in his heart that he was going to crucify it. He could have said to the Lord, Man, I am so scared you need to help me out of this situation. But he didn't do that. He didn't do that. He said, Lord, I have come to the earth. I have done the job that you asked me to do. And I hope you are satisfied with what I've done. He was praying for himself. Now he's praying for the disciples. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. He gave him the disciples. He gave you to, he, the Lord gave you to him. The Lord gave you to Jesus. That you can take his gospel all over the world. He says, they were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now, they th know that everything you have given me comes from you. So over the course of three years, he teach the um, disciples everything they should know. Just as we teach you in this church, everything you should know to hit that street. And go and get the people in this building. For I gave them the words you gave me and they accepted it. 
I mean, this is beautiful stuff. I mean, you cannot write a book like this. They knew with certainty that I came from you. They knew. And they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me. God has given you to Jesus. For they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and the glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name. He asked. This guy is so scared he's going to be crucified. But he is still asking for you that God protect you. What a gentleman, man. He's such a good God. They are not of this world even as I'm not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is the truth. As you sent me in this world, I have sent them into the world. Pastor Don said it clearly on Thursday night. Take you out of the world, teach you, and then he sent you back in the world. That's called the gospel. That's called knocking on doors and say, do you know what Jesus did for me? And people, time is running out. Fast. For them I sanctify, for them I sanctify myself that they too may be truly sanctified. Isn't it a beautiful? My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. The message from the pulpit. God expects you to believe what your pastor is trying to teach you every week. That all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me, I am in you. So he wants to make you one with the Lord and Jesus, all one. So we become just like Jesus. We can be just like God. How do we do that? We learn about the gospel to become, and we pray, and we learn about the gospel. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be on as we may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will now know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be, be where I am and see my glory. The glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, through the world does not know you. Though the world does not know you, I know you and they know you that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in the order that the love you have for me and may be in them. He expects you that your love that you, of Jesus Christ is in your heart. That when you go out there that you radiant. That you shine for God. I have made you known to them. 
and will continue to make you known in order the love you have for me and may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Now that whole chapter is a prayer. If this doesn't change your life, what a man will pray that prayer to for himself, to the disciples, and to you people. That is a God that we serve. He did, wasn't selfish going to the cross. He still thought of you, of you in John 17. We're getting closer by him getting crucified in this chapter. Now with the crucifixion that come up, I want you to go and meditate on that prayer over and over and read that ch chapter 17 and watch Skip's message. Just type in Luke 17 and Skip's message will come on. Or oh, John 17, sorry. But with that, I want to invite you all to sing this song with me right now. Play the song, honey. Play the song. Um, play the song. I want you to sing a song. It's our new song. It's a different song that I picked, but it's a different song for this season. Take on your feet and praise the Lord. I saw the Lord seated on his throne. Seated on his throne. Jesus, we love you. He's clothed in glory. He was clothed in glory. Exalted high. Exalted high. The train of his robe. 